Section 1.5, Uncertainty in Measurement. There are two types of numbers. You have exact numbers. Let me write these down. So you have exact numbers, which exact numbers would be either defined or counted. So if you know there's 2.54 centimeters in an inch, that's defined. Or if you know that there is one milliliter in a cubic centimeter, that's defined. That is an exact number. Uh, every, uh, or it's counted. There's 12 something. Okay, so those are exact numbers. Inexact numbers is anything that um, is measured. So when you measure something, your measurement is limited by how good your measuring device is. So for that reason, you have to spend a lot of effort making sure that you don't mess up an answer simply by um, being sloppy in how you present that answer. So the first thing we're going to review or learn is scientific notation because scientific notation is a really, first of all, it's very useful in science because we're dealing with very, very, very small things and, and very many things. And so you have huge numbers, either small or big, and just writing them down is cumbersome. So scientific notation makes a lot of sense uh, to use it. So here's uh, two examples. If I have 3.72 times 10 to the negative 10, okay, 3.72 meters, that's a very awkward unit. So instead, like point zero 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 three seven two meters. It would be easier to express it as three point seven two times ten to the negative ten or three hundred and seventy two picometers. Okay, rather than three point three zero 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 zero. That's really hard. I can't look at that and see how many zeros and in my mind I don't even know what number that is. So the rule for scientific notation is if you have a number smaller than one, so this would be a decimal number smaller than one, then you are going to move the decimal to the first digit that is a non-zero digit after the first digit. So you're going to have a digit between one and ten as your first digit and then a decimal. So in this case you're going to to move it after the three and then the number of places is going to be equal to this exponent. And since you are moving to the right, it's going to be a negative exponent. So if I move it 10 spaces to the right, then it's going to be 3.72 times 10 to the negative 10. And it's negative because I'm, I'm dividing, I'm going to the right. If you have a very, very large number, so that would be a very small number, something 0 0.0003, very small number, you're going to end up with a negative exponent. If you have a very large number, so one five zero 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 meters, then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to move the decimal after the first non-zero number. So in this case, after the five, you have one point five, and then the rest of them are simply placeholding zeros. You count the number of spaces you moved it, and that would be eleven. So one point five times ten to the eleven, uh, and then if you want to redo it into um, new metrics, it would be. 150 gigameters. Okay, so you'll use this, um, you'll use it all the time. The next concept is accuracy and precision. So accuracy refers to if you're, if you're getting what you aimed for, you're aiming at the bullseye and you hit the bullseye. So it refers to the proximity of a measurement to the true value. So you're aiming at the bullseye, you hit the bullseye. So that's very accurate. Precise doesn't mean accurate. Precise means you're repeating yourself over and again. So you aim at the bullseye, hit a two. You aim at the bullseye, hit a two. Aim at the bullseye, hit a two. You're very precise because you're repeatable. You're doing. You're getting close to the same measurement every single time. And a lot of times, if you're very repeatable but it's not accurate, then it has something to do with the, with the measuring device. Your measuring device is 
off a little bit. And so you're doing it well, but you're limited by the device. So in case A, this would be very precise. This is precise, but not accurate. B would be precise and accurate because it, it's aiming, it's all together and it's aiming at the bullseye. And C would be neither accurate nor precise because it's all over the place. So precision has a lot to do with the instrument. So if I were to measure um, a tennis ball on a lab scale and get a certain amount of grams, um, I would get a different amount if I use it in an analytical balance, which could go up to four digits past the decimal or more, very expensive ones, more and more more expensive ones, would go even less. It would go to a ten thousand, hundred thousandth of a place. So you would get, you would get a more, um, you would get a, a more precise reading uh, if you had more um, um, finer instrument. So if you were to have, say, a, use a bathroom scale, you only are measuring in kilograms, not even grams, you wouldn't know exactly, I mean, you'd be so far off. A lab balance is at 54.4 grams, but here, if you only have kilograms, it's 0.07 kilograms. Very, very different number because your scale is not as precise. An analytical balance, the one with a box, could go to four places past the decimal, um, and you have three measurements and then you average, this is going to be um, much more precise than this. All right, so precision has to do with the instrument you're using. So the last measured, uh, the last digit is always guessed. You're always making a guess. So if I have a 25 written on, on the scale and I have a 30, and it's somewhere in between 25 and 30, you're going to have to guess that last digit. And that last digit is considered significant. It's not, uh, even though that it, it, it's approximated, that's one reason why you do multiple trials. You do three or four things and then average them together. Uh, kind of takes care of, of some of that. But you're going to make a, anything measured, the very last thing is going to be guessed at. So when we use measurements, we want to include those digits that are significant. We don't want it to be so iffy that we're not conveying correct information. So when rounding a calculated number, we pay attention to significant figures so that we do not use um, a calculator to make it look more um, precise. Let's say I have a yardstick with no markings on it at all. And I measure the wall with it, and I make a, you know, I say there's 14 of them plus maybe a half or a third or a fourth, and I make a guess of this last one. And now I measure the other wall and multiply them together to get a area. And your calculator gives you five dis digits past the decimal point. Well, I, I can't show five digits past the decimal point if my meter stick had no digits past the decimal point. So my I had an uncertainty that I cannot cover up just by arithmetic. That's what significant figures is. And this is the list that has to be either written down, memorized, being able to be used. All non-zero digits are significant. So anything that's not a zero is, a, is significant. It's the zeros that are the problem. If you have zeros between two significant digits, like 405, the inside zero is significant. It's part of that number. It's the end zero and the beginning zero that's iffy. If you have something like we saw, 0. 0.00003, all those zeros at the beginning are only placeholders. They're not part of the number. They're just part of the, they're just holding the place so that you know it was 317 picometers. That's all that is. So they don't count as part of the measurement. Likewise, anything at the end, if you have 93 million, all of the zeros at the end are not significant. It's just part of, it's just, it's just a showing you that it's the millions you're talking about. Now, if you've measured something and it's exactly 93 million to exact, 
then you can indicate that by a decimal point, and the decimal point shows that all those zeros are significant. And we'll look at that in a second. So let's look at some examples. If I have 4.803, well, the 4 is significant, the 8 is significant, the 3 is significant, so therefore the 0 in between them are significant, and there would be 4 significant digits there. If I have 0 .00661, the zeros at the beginning are all leading zeros, and they are insignificant, and there are only three significant digits here. Okay, let me add one here. If I have 55.220, you would think that this last zero is insignificant, but it's after a decimal point. Remember I said if I have, if you measured exactly 93 million, then you can indicate it with the decimal point. The decimal point there, so if you have a zero, if you have a decimal point after zeros uh, in between a non-zero number and the decimal point, then the decimal point's indicating that they're significant. If you have a zero after a decimal point, that's after a non-zero number. See, this is after a decimal point, but there's no non-zero number here. So these go away, these are insignificant. But if you have a decimal point after, if you have a zero after a decimal point, which is also after a non-zero number, then that's the the fact that it's there is showing you that it's significant. It was measured to the thousandths of a place. Uh, you had a a scale good enough to measure to the thousandths place, and it happened to be a zero, not a one. So you write it down, and it's it's considered significant. So there would be five here. If I had thirty-four thousand two hundred meters. These last two, since I don't have a decimal, these last two are insignificant. They're just placeholders. They're showing you that it's in the thousands, not in the hundreds. So there would be, um, there would be three significant digits here. If you add a decimal point after that zero, then it would be five significant figures. Okay. Now, when you're doing math with numbers, you cannot show something more precise than, than you had the measurements. So to do that, there's, there's rules for how you add numbers and how you sub, uh, and add and subtract and how you multiply and divide. So we'll look at them separately. When you add or subtract, you are rounding to the least significant decimal place of whatever your measurements were. So if you have one measurement to the point, point something, point, point 0.3, and you have another one to the point 0.603, and you do math with them, you add them together, you cannot make it to the ten thousandths place if one of your measurements was only, was only uh, precise to the tenths place. So you have to round to whatever place is the least. So let's look at that. Let me go ahead and say to multiplication. Multiplication division is different. You're not you're not rounding to the to the decimal place, but you're rounding to the number of significant digits. So whatever, if you have three significant digits multiplied by something that was two significant digits, you get an answer. You have to round it to the least number of significant digits. So two in this case. Okay, we'll look at some examples. So here's an addition problem. I have one measurement that's only measured, um, we only know it to the, t to the hundredths place, okay, the two, de two decimal digits. The, the second one, we know it, you know, all the way to the fifth decimal point. But when I do it on a calculator, I'm going to get 3.18 plus 0 0.01315. I'm going to get it to five decimal places on the calculator or more. The calculator is just indicating uh, digits together. But since these are measurements, I can't go past the hundredths place because one of my measurements only went there. So I can't show more precision than I, than I have. So that means I have to round to the, to, the, to the lower one, to the one that is least significant. So I have to round this to the, to the hundredths place. Even though I'm going to, the calculator will give me more digits, I have to round them off. So here's another example. If I have 20.42, that's to the, that's two decimal places. I'm going to add 1.322, that's three decimal places. 
I add 83.1, that's 1. That means when I get an answer, the calculator will give me 0.842, but I have to round it to one decimal place because the least, this guy was only to the, to the one. So I can't, since I've used him, I cannot show more precision than I actually have. So this, these round off and your answer would be 104.8. Okay, so addition, subtraction would be number or place, decimal place. Here's a multiplication problem, actually division problem. If I have three significant figures and I'm dividing by four significant figures, I cannot have, my calculator is going to give me a decimals all the way to the end of the calculator. I can't use them all. I have to round to the, to the smaller number of significant figures. So in this case, I have to round to three. Here's another example. I have four decimal places or four significant figures here. I have two significant figures here. Your calculator gives you a big long answer. I have to round to two significant figures. So I'm gonna to go to the first two, that's 32. I'm gonna look at the three. If it's more than five, the two goes up to three. If it's less than five, the two stays put and your answer would be 32. And finally, let me give you the easy. If you have anything expressed in scientific notation, that is the number of significant digits you have. So if you have something written 1.03 times 10 to the whatever, there's three significant figures here. If uh, you have 1.030 or more, you can have four or five significant digits. Whatever you see is the number of significant digits if it's written in, in, um, in scientific notation. Also, if you want to make sure that someone knows that there's four significant digits, then you write it in scientific notation and then there's no doubt. Everybody knows exactly what it is. All right, this is a hard lesson. Uh, we'll work on it.